After the chaotic events surrounding the planet Fiorina 161 in the year 2179, not much is known of what became of the world. After Michael Bishop and his team left the planet with Prisoner Morse, Whale and Jutani would finally close the facility, ceasing all operations. But what else, if anything, occurred there after it was left behind to be forgotten to the Middle Heavens? As a quick recap to those who are unaware of the events that occurred in the Class C Correctional Facility on Fury 161 in 2179, the project will provide some background. The Class C Correctional Facility on the planet Fury 161 was being operated by a skeleton staff and a small number of convicts, all of which who had chosen to remain there after the facility's unofficial closure in years prior. After the tragic events of the Hadley's Hope disaster on the moon of LV-426, the US CSS Sulaco and its remaining inhabitants passed by the Fury 16 star system, home to Fury 161. Somehow, a Xenomorph XX121 Overmorph had gotten aboard the Sulaco, causing a fire and implanting Ellen Ripley with P Praepotens. The fire in the ship causes it to eject its crew in their stasis pods via the vessel's emergency evacuation vehicle. While Rebecca Jordan and Corporal Dwayne Hicks both died during the EEB's impact on the surface of Fury 161, Ripley, her gestating chestburster, and the royal facehugger that implanted her all survived. After Ripley was recovered from it, the wreckage of the EEB was taken away in order to be scrapped during which one of the facility's domesticated animals was implanted by this royal facehugger. Eventually, a Xenomorph XX121 runner type is born from this creature, and the runner proceeds to cause havoc across the facility until it was dispatched by Ripley and the surviving convict inmates. During the creature's rampage through the facility, Wayland Jutani was alerted by the custodial staff of the facility uh, of the current situation that was going on there. And so Michael Bishop and his team of dog catcher commandos were dispatched to possibly procure a specimen of XX121 for study. Unfortunately, they arrived too late to obtain the runner as it had already been destroyed by Ripley and the inmates. With Ripley following this up with a suicide, eliminating the second chance at procuring a Xenomorph XX121. It was from this point that Michael Bishop of the company quickly realised that they had failed in their task, and opted to leave quickly and swiftly to tend to his severe head trauma. Michael Bishop had suffered this extensive trauma after staff member Aaron attempted to kill Bishop after uh, striking his head with a large metal instrument. Just prior to their departure from the facility, his team and the dog catchers conducted an examination of the lead works and prison facilities. It was their priority to recover any and all xenomorph materials. While the team did discover blood samples of Ellen Ripley, taken after her arrival to the facility by Dr. Clemens, they didn't discover anything else of note. Well, and Jutani then officially closed this facility and put all the equipment remaining there up for sale. The final survivor of the events of Fury 161, Robert Morse, was taken off world by Michael Bishop and his team, presumably to be reincarcerated in another prison facility elsewhere. Sometime shortly after this though, Morse would release uh, his short novel that he titled Space Beast, recounting the events that occurred on Fury 161 from his point of view. Space Beast, while colourful, is an accurate, unfiltered account of what happened within the prison facility that year. And while the book was shunned by the company and they tried to have it blacklisted and removed from public circulation, the book still found ways of getting around the middle heavens, cluing the wider population in on the threat that was emerging in the form of the Xenomorph XX121 and Weyland Jutani's unrelenting carelessness to procure them. After the closure and yet to find any buyers for the facility, the planet has fallen into obscurity. For anyone that ends up one day returning to the facility though, they will be met with a grave surprise. It turns out that the dog catcher team with Michael Bishop were not thorough enough with their search of the facility. 
Unbeknownst to them, the runner Xenomorph XX121 had begun the process of creating a hive, using the human victims that it had killed to generate XX121 overmorphs. The creature was able to achieve this through the egg morphing process, or the overmorphing process, whichever term you prefer. This hive, ripe with overmorphs, is just waiting to be discovered by the next inhabitants that come to call Fury161 home, or any visitors that are curious enough to stumble upon them. It's likely that there are a total of three overmorphs within the hive in the correctional facility, evident from the fact that at least uh, three individuals were presumably added to this hive structure. These include prisoners Boggs and Rains, as well as Superintendent Andrews. If you're wondering why the Fury Runner uh, would have done this, well, it's really quite simple. The Runner was preparing for the next generation of its kind. Lone drone stage uh, Xenomorph XX121s have been shown to be uh, drawn instinctively to create hive structures, either ready for a coming queen, ready for when it might molt into a queen, or creating a contingency of overmorphs ready to spawn the next line of drones. One looming question that has been posed to us is, if this hive existed at the time, then why didn't the dog catchers find it? How come they missed it? And while we can't say exactly due to a lack of sufficient data, there are two main possibilities that I see. It's either that the dog catchers operating uh, on very little information simply didn't have enough guidance to conduct a thorough enough search of the facility, possibly missing the hive structure before departing aboard the US CSS Patna. A more subjective theory of mine though is that it is possible that this team did discover the hive. However, after witnessing the grave sacrifice of Ellen Ripley to prevent this creature from prevailing and falling into the company's hands, Perhaps some of the dog catchers saw the light, so to speak. Perhaps they did find the hive, simply failed to report it in. Possibly out of respect, but I think it's more likely that it was out of fear of the dire warning displayed by Ripley about these creatures. And with that, the team would leave the facility none the wiser of the fact that there lie the beginnings of a xenomorph hive in the correctional facility. Now, no matter how they missed it, they simply did. And now, with Robert Morse's Space Beast novel spreading throughout the Middle Heavens, it's only a matter of time before some interested party comes searching for a deadly prize waiting to be stumbled upon. Before you go, I wanted to let you know about the Acheron Colonial Marketplace, the one-stop shop for all Project Acheron merchandise. All proceeds go to fund our future endeavours under the project. So if you want to support the channel and look good doing it, pick up some Acheron merch. But what other data logs would you like to see? If you have any ideas or have any questions to be answered, please leave them in the comments or contact me directly through the Project Acheron Discord. If you enjoyed today's segment, please leave a like and share the video. And if you really want to support what we do here and gain access to a bunch of awesome rewards, consider becoming a Project Acheron channel member, like Project Director Chris Dasinger, and team member Raunchy. I hope to see you all here again very soon, but until then, this is the Acheron Project, signing off.